Joining us now is someone with uh, experience on this subject, certainly Manny Wax, CEO of Voice Against Child Sexual Abuse. He speaks to us from Ramat HaSharon. And Manny, here we are again. I just, look, without specifically saying, and let's let's stress these are allegations against you to Meshi Zahav, nothing has been proved. But I guess there is a general principle here that it could be anybody, because, again, Yudha Meshizav was someone who's become greatly admired in recent years, just been, in fact, awarded the Israel Prize. You could score Israel's highest civilian honor, and now a series of terrible allegations. Absolutely. When I heard of these allegations, my instinctive response was, this is shocking, but not surprising. Uh, it's something that we have come to see in recent years in particular, where... Uh, generally men uh, abusing their position of power and authority and uh, using it especially against those in, who are most vulnerable, in this case allegedly uh, women who came to him for assistance and also allegedly minors. Uh, we've seen it whether it's in, uh, in the Jewish community or even beyond. Uh, Dr Larry Nasser, for example, from uh, the US uh, gymnastics and Olympics team, uh, sexually assaulted hundreds and uh, is now staying in jail. So the fact that um, that someone doesn't look like that stereotypical, creepy male who we used to think decades ago was the offender, was the sexual offender, those days are over. It could be anyone. Of course, the presumption of innocence um, is, is afforded to everyone, uh, but when we have so many allegations, and since the initial report of around six uh, complainants coming forward, we now have more than a dozen new cases in the last 24 hours, again, alleged cases. So there seems to be something systematic over here in terms of um, of his CV, in terms of allegedly assaulting uh, men, women and children. And hopefully now with the police investigation, uh, we will see a proper criminal investigation that will get to the bottom of this. Right. I'm glad you mentioned the Larry Nasser case because we could point out this kind of incident and the fact that it could happen in such a long period of time and be covered up could happen in any country, in any society, in any sector. But... Uh, because we talked to you extensively on the Malka Leifer case, another incident in the ultra-Orthodox community uh, in which some of these offenses were known, we have here an incident where people are saying this was many people in the ultra-Orthodox community or sector, at least in his circles, knew about it, but didn't come forward with these allegations before. Absolutely. In, in broader society, these cases are very difficult to speak out about on a regular day and a regular basis. Now we have a case where it's within the ultra-Orthodox community, where it's a closed community, much more closed than other um, segments of our Jewish community. And as you rightly point out, people around him say that they knew. It was a, a widely known secret. Um, so here we have a case of good people standing idly by and allowing this injustice to continue. Uh, it's incredible, but part of it is the manipulation in the sense of someone holding this position of authority and power and no one wanting to get on the wrong side of this individual. So thankfully now we've seen this report and hopefully it will provide some sort of empowerment for these alleged victims themselves, but also for anyone else, whether in this case or in other cases. There is an alleged abuser. It doesn't matter who that person is. We need to go to the authorities, allow them to investigate, and hopefully then justice will prevail. And it's not only about justice, it's also about shaping the conversation around the issue of, uh, of sexual assaults. We need to be able to talk about it. It's not the taboo that it used to be back then. Stigmas are uh, slowly eroding. But we need to address well, let me problem. let me ask you briefly, Manny, is that an impact of the Malka Leifer case where she was finally extradited and maybe now we're seeing this? That's going to that creates a, a, an, a, an impact that makes more and more people in these cases come forward. Absolutely. It's not just about one case or another. Every time there is this public awareness and discussion around these issues. It does prompt new survivors in other cases to go to the authorities. But I should note there is one very difficult issue that needs to be addressed, in particular in Israel, the issue of statute of limitations, because the police can open whatever investigation they would like, but the problem is that many of these allegations uh, re relate to incidences that 
um, occurred, the incidents that occurred back um, decades ago. And therefore, there needs to be a comprehensive look at Israel's statute of limitations, when someone can pursue justice, because if we're going to have um, survivors and victims encourage them to go to the police, they go to the police, and then they find out there is nothing the police can do. Not because they don't believe them, not because there's lack of evidence, but simply because of a technicality, a legal technicality, which means, which says at a certain age, we are prohibiting um, such cases from going to the courts. And that's simply not fair. Right. There are other countries, such as Australia, that there is no statute of limitations, and we need to change the laws in this country. Well, certainly the legislature is going to have to deal with, though, with that subject, as you just said. Manny Wax, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, moving on.